Here you see the incidence of scab on the fruit. Ginger Gold and McAllen had the higher incidence of fruit scab in 2009. Fortunately, there was very little fruit scab in 2010. In both years, it is interesting to note that Honeycrisp did not have scab on the fruit. Again, it appears to have a degree of natural resistance to apple scab. Here you see the incidence of rust lesions on the foliage of the various cultivars. Rust lesions include those caused by cedar apple rust, hawthorn rust, and possibly Japanese apple rust. These were not distinguished in the assessment. Ginger Gold and Honeycrisp have the highest rust incidences on leaves in both years. Incidence of fruit lesions in Orchard 2. Ginger Gold had the highest incidence of, of fruit with rust in both years. Honeycrisp ranked next. Rust is a concern since it can cause premature defoliation and downgrade the fruit. And the program of sulfur and lime sulfur does not seem to be that effective in managing the, the disease or diseases in this case. Removing the alternate host Eastern red cedar is important, but spores can travel distances from cedars and affect apple trees. We have removed the cedars from the hort farm where the orchards are located, but the spores come in from the surrounding areas. Here you see the instance of rust lesions on fruit in orchard two. Ginger gold had the highest incidence of fruit with rust in both years. Honeycrisp ranked next. Rust is, is of a concern to us since it can cause premature defoliation and downgrade the fruit. And the program of sulfur and lime sulfur does not seem to have the effectiveness um, in managing this disease. Removing the alternate host, eastern red cedar, is important, but spores can travel distances from cedars and infect apple trees. We have removed the cedars from the hort farm where the orchards are located, but the spores come in from the surrounding area. As I mentioned earlier, when we looked at the percentage of fruit in the various USDA apple grades, there was in general more fruit rots in 2010 than in 2009. Many factors may have influenced these results, including differences in weather between the two years. In 2009, um, the weather was relatively cool and wet, whereas in 2010, it was hot and dry. The hot weather in combination with the with the sulfur or lime sulfur sprays may have caused a phytotoxic reaction which led to fruit rotting. Also, higher codling moth populations, particularly on Honeycrisp, which you will see in a few slides from now, may have provided the openings for rotting organisms. Here we switch back to foliar data again in Orchard 2. After we assess the incidence of various diseases on, on each leaf, we note if the leaf is clean of the disease symptoms for which we are looking. In other words, are all the disease symptoms were absent. In both years, Liberty and Honeycrisp ranked the highest in the percentage which did not have any foliar disease symptoms. Also, after we assess the incidence of the various diseases on each fruit, we note if the fruit is clean of the disease symptoms for which we are looking. In other words, it does not have the symptoms. This, there is no clear pattern evident for, um, for fruit years, the, um, for percentage of fruit without disease symptoms. Honeycrisp had the lowest percentage of fruit without any disease symptoms in 2010. I did want to also point out an observation that we made in the spring of 2010. We observed numer numerous dead shoots 
in Orchard 1 and Orchard 2. These were obvious as the other shoots started to leaf out. These pictures are from trees in Orchard 1. We only did a formal assessment in Orchard 2, but we believe a similar situation um, occurred in um, Orchard 2. Basically, we saw the dead shoots primarily on ginger gold trees, with also some seen on, on honeycrisp trees. It appeared that this dieback was caused by infection of the shoot with rust. Basically, a relatively large rust lesion on the shoot caused the dieback, choked it out. It should be noted that the number of dead shoots per tree listed in this slide is is for all the trees assessed, not just those with dead shoots. So this is the average uh, number of dead shoots per tree across the orchard. In terms of arthropod management in both orchards, decisions are based on an extensive amount of monitoring using traps, degree day models, monitoring foliage and fruit, etc. We use standard IPM thresholds in determining if intervention is warranted. Listed on this slide are some of the options we have used to manage arthropod populations when it was deemed necessary. I just want to, uh, I just would like to present a few slides of um, some of the arthropod pests where there were some differences among the cultivars. I will present data from Orchard 1. These are the results from all the, tr all the leaves on a sample of shoots per tree in August. So this represents the level of European red mites towards the end of the growing season. A very high percentage of leaves with red mites were present in both years. Liberty trees had a significantly lower percentage of, of leaves with mites, you can see in the slide, in 2010, but it was still high. As I mentioned earlier, the high European red mite population may be a factor in the less than expected growth of the trees in Orchard 1. We are concerned that the, the sulfur or the lime sulfur we are using to manage apple scab is impacting the natural pressures of the European red mite and helping to flare their population. I included this slide just to make the point that Honeycrisp and to some extent Liberty seem to be attractive to Japanese beetles. These two cultivars rank the highest in incidence in both years. In terms of internal lepidoptera damage, we are really talking about codling moth damage. You can see from this slide that there was much more damage in 2010. Part of the reason for this, we believe, is because our timing was off in managing codling moth and the material we used was not very effective. We also were dealing with higher codling moth pressure in 2010. The pheromone trap captures were two to three times higher in 2010 compared to 2009. You can see that Honeycrisp had the highest percentage of fruit with damage in 2010. And as I had mentioned with a previous slide, the codling moth damage allowed for the entry of fruit rotting organisms. And Honeycrisp, as you saw earlier, had a high percentage of fruit rot. Going back to the foliage and looking at the percentage of leaves without any arthropod damage um, or pests present, at the time of assessment in August, you can see that only a very small percentage of leaves are clean or, with, or are without um, any arthropods or their damage in either year, which is understandable considering the very high incidence of European red mites in both years. In regards to the fruit, the percentage of fruit without insect damage decreased in 2010 compared to 2009, and then no differences were detected among the five cultivars in each year. In general, although not presented here because of time limitations of this presentation, there was an increase in insect damage in 2010 from a number of insect pests such as pump curculio and the tarnished pest bug, in addition to an increase in codling moth damage. 
based on a number of factors that appear to be challenges in Orchard 1 and Orchard 2, such as less than expected growth in Orchard 1, high European red mite populations and fruit rots in both orchards, which may be associated at least in part with the use of sulfur or lime sulfur, we started to plan for an additional orchard that would address these challenges, an orchard that would be comprised of the most promising apple cultivars that are scab resistant, so we could eliminate scab fungicides. 